1984, a year when Prince was number one on the charts and Ghostbusters was on the silver screen. Life was good, however, domestic performance cars had taken a back seat. America was still reeling from the oil crisis of the 70s, which meant low horsepower versions filled the husks of the once high-powered V8 pony cars. Now, this didn't mean that these companies stopped trying to build performance cars, though. Their focus just shifted to smaller, lightweight engines built for a more balanced approach that had emissions in mind. And of the big three manufacturers, Ford was really spearheading this assault and created a new team of engineers to build a balanced yet fuel-efficient powerhouse that could compete and win against its foreign competition. And their creation was none other than the iconic turbocharged four-cylinder SVO Mustang. <laughs> Now, before delving into the details of the SVO Mustang, it's crucial to revisit the 1970s to understand why Ford shifted away from producing high-power V8 muscle cars. In 1970, Henry Ford II ceased all of Ford's racing program sponsorships. This decision coincided with the federal government's introduction of the Corporate Average Fuel Economy Regulations, or CAFE Regulations for short. These rules imposed fines on automakers whose fleet averages fell below specified fuel efficiency thresholds, which were calculated per 0.1 mile per gallon deviation and multiplied by total sales. Now that sounds like a lot of technical jargon, so basically every car's mile per gallon rating mattered when they were added together, and if the numbers were bad for even one car, it could end up resulting in large fines for the whole company. As a result, aerodynamics also began to play a much more crucial role in vehicle design to help aid fuel economy. And although at this time Ford continued with the Mustang II in the mid-70s, this model's performance was pretty abysmal. And by 1975, in the anticipation of future trends, Ford initiated the design of the new Mustang on the Fox Compact chassis, which would debut for the 1979 model year. Now, Ford allocated an extensive array of resources to meticulously sculpt the next-generation Mustang in the wind tunnel, guaranteeing its aerodynamic integrity. The new Fox Body Mustang emerged on the market as both a two-door coupe and as a hatchback variant, providing a diverse selection of powertrains as well that spanned from a 2.3-liter four-cylinder all the way up to the iconic V8 302 small block Ford. However, these early Fox Body Mustangs failed to truly capture the sports car DNA that Ford intended for them to have. So in 1980, Ford created a special division that could oversee their performance programs and the production of limited edition performance vehicles for the street using race-derived parts. And this new team was officially called the Special Vehicle Operations Department, or SVO, which would be led by Michael Cranifus, who was previously the head of the racing department at Ford of Europe as the director of motorsports. So SVO was in good hands. Now SVO's first real task was to build a car that was both blatantly American as well as competent enough in the turns to compete with the entry-level European sports cars of the era. And the obvious choice was to use the newly designed Fox Body Mustang. So the Mustang IMSA project was born. In 1981, Ford selected former Porsche driver Klaus Ludwig to drive one of the new 2.3-liter turbocharged four-cylinder Mustangs at IMSA events, while SVO also began to help fund and give support to multiple other drivers to push this project along. The initial turbocharged Mustangs released before the SVO were underwhelming to say the least, offering a mere 132 horsepower which was only a slight increase from their naturally aspirated counterparts, left much potential untapped. At the same exact time, though, McLaren explored the turbocharged Fox platform with their M81 Mustang, which pushed the limits of what the Fox body could achieve. The McLaren version dramatically increased the power output to 175 horsepower, demonstrating the significant untapped potential of this Turbo 4. This experiment, though limited to just 10 M81 McLaren Mustangs, hinted at the capabilities that the more widely produced SVO could capitalize on. And by 1982, a group of 30 engineers worked tirelessly to build two SVO Mustang prototypes to take racing to prove the concept. 
These cars included Jack Roush prepped engines, and they were to compete in a 24-hour long road race event for grand touring cars known as the Longest Day in Nelson Ledges, Ohio. This event would put the prototype up against the Camaro Z28, the Datsun 280ZX Turbo, the Mazda RX-7 GSL, and the Porsche 944. This team wasn't out there to necessarily win, but more so to test the powertrain and overall package durability. And while only one of the prototype Mustangs would end up finishing the race, these cars did show tons of promise from a handling perspective compared to the prior V8 cars. And it looked like that Ford was on the right track when it came to creating a true Canyon car for Mustang. Initially, Ford had slated the 1982 model year as the debut year for the new SVO Mustang, according to its preliminary designs. However, in a surprising turn of events, Ford at this time announced that they were going to discontinue the Mustang itself in favor of a partnership with Mazda to develop a front-wheel drive sports car on the Mazda 6 platform, which reflected the era's trends. Fortunately, though, this drastic shift was short-lived, and Ford came to their senses and reverted back to the original plan to keep the Mustang and the SVO project alive. This detour, however, postponed the SVO's launch until late 1983, marking it as a 1984 model. The 1984 SVO Fox Body Mustang is a quintessential representation of the 80s automotive design philosophy. The curves of the 70s were replaced with bold, angular aesthetic characteristics on the Fox Body Mustang, which were then further accentuated by the SVO's unique modifications. Offered only in the hatchback style configuration, the SVO package introduced an aerodynamic front end and an innovative biplane style rear spoiler, along with different fender flares, sail panels that were adjacent to the quarter windows, and taillights that the 93 Cobra also later adopted. The vehicle's front was distinguished by a special hood design to accommodate the turbocharged four cylinder that featured a unique snorkel on the passenger side to channel air into the intercooler. And under that special hood is where the culmination of all that R&D and IMSA testing paid off. The SVO's 2.3 liter turbocharged single overhead cam Lima four cylinder engine was its heart of performance. Ford was able to use a specially tuned EFI setup as well as an inner core to help cram 14 pounds of boost through this little four cylinder. And when powered with 91 octane gas in 1984, this setup made 175 horsepower at 4,400 RPM and 210 foot pounds of torque at 3,000 RPM, which actually equaled its Mustang GT counterpart, which was packing the 5 liter V8. And one year later, things would get even better for the SVO as the peak power numbers would increase to 205 horsepower and 248 foot pounds of torque. Behind this turbocharged mill sat a T5 five speed manual transmission and a Ford 7.5 inch rear end with varying axle ratios from 345 all the way up to 373s, all with traction lock differentials. This combination gave the SVO a 0 to 60 time of around 7.5 seconds and a quarter mile time of 15.5 seconds at 90 miles an hour with an overall top speed of 135. And another significant highlight of the SVO Mustang lies in its chassis design, which delivered superior handling and weight distribution compared to its V8 siblings. It featured the same independent front suspension and it had a quad shock live axle suspension in the rear. Standard equipment on the SVO included four wheel disc brakes, stiffer springs, different bushings, along with adjustable Coney shocks and struts. Moreover, the SVO was also equipped with larger sway bars, both front and rear, which again only helped further its handling. This manual transmission road racer boasted a polished interior that was tailored for the performance enthusiast, with each SVO featuring a charcoal gray interior and deeply bolstered seats from Lear Sigler. This Euro-inspired Mustang showcased a modern instrument cluster, including a tachometer with an aggressive 8,000 RPM cap on it and a speedo that was capped at only 85 miles an hour 
as were many other American cars at the time. Although unnumbered red lines hinted at top speeds up to 140 on the Speedo, but these were for use on closed roads only, of course. On the racing side of this car's history, the SVO Mustangs dominated in the SCCA Trans Am and IMSA GT series. With Jack Roush now involved, these Mustangs won 17 of 34 contests from 1985 to 1986. And by 1989, Ford had scored a whopping 46 Trans Am victories, more than all the other manufacturers combined. Not bad, starting with a four-cylinder Mustang, huh? Journalists loved the balance and performance that the SVO offered, and it seemed like Ford had cracked the code on the next generation of performance Mustangs, which could have been turbo four-cylinder cars. Yet the situation evolved very differently. As the 1980s progressed, gas prices began to decline, diminishing the appeal of the turbocharged four-cylinders cost efficiency. This sparked a resurgence in the race for higher displacement and higher power, leaving the SVO at a disadvantage. Plus, there will always be some people like myself who will always prefer the sound of a good old American V8 in a Mustang, no matter how fast the four-cylinder is. And despite Ford's efforts to enhance the SVO's performance between 84 and 86 to spark further interest, its initial price tag of $16,700 was $6,000 more than the V8 Mustang GT and was prohibitively expensive for many people, which led to only about 4,500 cars being sold in its first model year. In an attempt to boost sales, Ford reduced the SVO's price to $14,895 in 1985, but sales even fell further that year to just under 2,000 cars. And for the last year of the SVO, which was 1986, the price was bumped up again, but now to a middle ground $15,600. And word started to spread amongst racers and enthusiasts about how quick the platform was. And car sales actually increased to 3,300 units that year. But sadly, it still wasn't enough. In the end, 9,844 SVO Mustangs would be made before the specialty four-cylinder Mustang was totally killed off. Thankfully, the Special Vehicle Operations Team would be renamed to the Special Vehicle Team, or SVT, in 1993, and they would go on to build other 90s legends like the SVT Lightning and SVT Cobra, which all stemmed from their involvement in the SVO project. And even though it only had a three-year long production run, the SVO Mustang was one of the most powerful Mustangs of the 80s and it still holds strong today as a collector car for Mustang enthusiasts. So let us know in the comments down below if you had to pick between an 85 Mustang GT with the 5 liter or the much rarer and faster SVO, which would you take? But thank you all for watching another episode of our Rare Cars documentary series. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash that notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.